So let's begin with what we know about the Fold Weapon. It's a weapon that the IMC made to destroy planets. Their main goal was to destroy the planet Harmony where the Frontal Militia had their headquarters. But of course, this plan didn't really work out. The reason why? Well, they underestimated the knowledge of the Fold Weapon and the Ark, which backfired quite harshly on them. But how can they underestimate their own knowledge of something they made themselves? Well, the answer is quite simple. They didn't create the Fold Weapon themselves. If you listen closely to what General Mara says during his speech, you will hear him confessing that they didn't make it and that they're not even sure what it's supposed to do. And so that brings us to this planet Typhoon, where we have discovered a gift, a machine that will do more than change the tide. Call it fate, call it evolution, call it what you will. The truth is we have discovered our resolution, and in it lies a weapon with a powerful ability to fold space and time. We don't know who built it, but we do know that it is quite old. And most importantly, we have learned enough to bring it to life. A common misconception regarding the full weapon is that the Ark and the weapon itself is the same thing. But the truth is that the Ark is actually just a power source that is required to make the full weapon actually work. We must complete a small scale test here first to tune the power source or the Ark as our colleagues tend to call it. Throughout the chapter you can find different audio logs from multiple INC scientists that worked on the analysis of the Ark. In the logs they explain their thoughts and concerns about the Ark and how General Motor ignores their warnings. General Motor is gone. He's making us stay to complete the test. I don't trust this thing. The Ark is unstable. Looks like they went forward with the Ark test, despite my warnings to postpone, but what Martyr wants, Martyr gets. Even though the scientists clearly confirmed that it wasn't even close to reaching the testing stage, they did it anyway and opened fire towards Titan's moon Arthurus. The test was successful, and the IMC started working on the full-scale version of the weapon. But what they didn't know was that the frontal militia had already wiretapped INC communication and heard about the test. After that, Commander Sarah Briggs launched a top-secret operation to investigate the area and stop the artists in whatever they were doing. This operation's codename was Operation Broadsword, or as we know it, the Battle of Titan. So, now that we have some information surrounding the Fold Weapon, have you ever really sat down and thought about what the implications of this thing existing are? Sure, it can destroy a planet, but it almost seems as if Titanfall has glossed over a few things about its creation and function. So, it's not biology, but there's still science to be had here, so it's definitely something that I would like to cover. Let's attempt to wrap our minds around how this weapon is actually going to function. First and foremost, let's touch on the fact that this thing was created by aliens. There is a log in-game that goes goes into detail discussing the weapon, saying that it was outside of human understanding and technological achievements. The weapon was discovered to be indigenous to the planet Typhon in a state of disrepair. So you know what that means. Aliens confirmed in Titanfall. Which is pretty cool, but it's obvious this piece of tech was created by a species that vastly outsmarts us and is way more intelligent. These logs in-game also make mention that the weapon was really possibly not a weapon at all. Dr. Ehrenberg. Log 11.4. Further research still leaves questions about the fold weapon and its intended purpose. I don't think we're using it right, and that may cause a problem. Martyr thinks it's worth it. Well, I'm going on record. This is a bad idea. The log hints at the fact that there's a possibility this weapon was actually supposed to be used as a form of transport. Albeit, this was a failed attempt and nobody knows what happened to the species after it was presumably tested. It's not known 100% if they did fire it or not, or if humans were the first to fire it and we saw its destructive capability. But if I had to guess, I would say the reason it was abandoned is because the species fired it, realized, hey, this doesn't work and then left it. But we have pretty much covered the lore and history concerning its creation and abilities, so let's get to how it might actually work. I've got a few ideas, but bear with me as I am no astrophysicist, though I did try to tweet Neil deGrasse Tyson to get him to answer some questions. Uh, he threw a curve at me, so I was forced to do my own research. So let's get cracking on how this weapon might actually work. The weapon itself is called a fold weapon. As most of you are probably going to know, the concept of a fold weapon is that it's going to fold 
space. The easiest way to think about this is two-dimensionally, but we will cover our dimension in a moment. So take a piece of paper and pretend you want to go from one side to the other, and the paper's length represents one light year. To travel across this, you would need a lot of food and fuel to make this tremendous journey, and it would take a long time to do so, at least with our current technology. However, if you fold space, it would be almost like folding the piece of paper. So we've established that it is actually one light year to cross this piece of paper. You take one end, fold it over to the starting point where you're at, and this is basically what a wormhole is. You would be bringing one point of space to the other point of space, performing pretty much instantaneous travel, albeit the distances would be massively vast, like further and more vast than any human could possibly even comprehend. Currently, we do not know if it is possible to travel through a wormhole or not, and apparently we would need something called exotic matter to pass through, as this would keep a wormhole open and stationary considering gravity tends to want to close these things off. There's others that think that possibly the background radiation would fry anything that got into the wormhole, and really would destroy any ship that was trying to utilize the wormhole. But then again, this is just a generalized hypothesis we don't even know if these things exist. In our third dimension, this hole would actually appear as a sphere opening up in the universe. If you would like a good visualization of this, it would be from the movie Interstellar if you were having trouble thinking about it or what it would look like. Or just imagine maybe like a bubble or sphere in space that you can pass into and it would appear, you would basically appear on the other side trillions of miles away. This is what the weapon does to operate. It will fold space, create a wormhole in that designated area, which is how it can basically target a planet at vast distances and not destroy everything in its path because the actual path does not really go through our known space, it goes outside of our space. But opening a wormhole alone will not destroy a planet. So what actually causes the damage that we see on Typhon at the end of Titanfall 2? Recently we as a species have directly observed gravitational waves after two black holes merged into one another, sending ripples throughout the galaxy. I believe that the fold weapon would utilize gravity and gravitational waves to open the wormhole and then gravity supposedly would have enough energy to open a wormhole at first. Think of something like a black hole tearing uh, the fabric of the universe. So when the weapon is spun up and fired on testing its capabilities on the moon, what is actually happening is the weapon is going to be opening a wormhole near the moon and exceedingly strong gravitational waves are directed at the object. The waves can cause particles to fluctuate, almost creating a heating effect. Sort of think of it as a microwave vibrating the water particles in your food, heating them up. Same concept. So, with the wormhole opened and the gravitational waves almost heating the interior of the planet well beyond what it actually should be, this causes an expansion which cracks the crust, decimating the planet. I base my theory on the the gravitational waves on the context clues that can be seen if you run through the facility associated with wormholes is almost time travel. We aren't certain as a species, but there is a possibility that you don't just travel distance, but also time, as time and space are related. So, when you are bouncing back and forth between the temporal disturbances in the area, this could easily be miniature wormholes traveling time rather than distance. This would be caused by the gravity fluctuations put off by the weapon itself. Think of it as almost if you fire a weapon, the heat from the weapon would dissipate into the surrounding area. With the fold weapon when it is fired, some of the gravitational waves dissipate into the surrounding area as well. As for the Ark, you wouldn't think I would forget about that, did you? So, if we look at the Ark, it is basically a bright blue ball, but it is pushed by Cooper towards BT in the campaign, so it must be a physical object that is solid rather than just pure energy. So, here's my hypothesis on that. I believe that the Ark is a form of cold fusion. Fusion energy is going to be when two atoms come together, which is much more powerful than fission, which is what our nukes are based on which basically splitting an atom. Anyhow, the metallic sphere that they transport this in is clearly going to be magnetic and suspended in place, which is actually how we are attempting to unlock the power of fusion right now on Earth. If you haven't heard about it, that's the future, son. Anyhow, the ball itself is clearly a casing containing the fusion energy. The arc's power source is utilized by the fold weapon, allowing it enough energy to fold space and send gravitational waves to heat up and destroy planets. That would explain why Blisk told Sloan to be careful and that they couldn't just rip it out of BT. It is unstable in its raw form without the magnetic casing. When BT and Cooper moves towards the Ark at the end of affecting costs, you can hear that people are screaming that the Ark is overloading. It then seems to send out an electric magnetic pulse that manages to overpower and short circuit the time gauntlet which leads to the cool time freezing sequence. Could this be a part of the firing sequence? BT says that the rings are still charged with the residual energy. 
it seems like it was one hell of a blast when the fold web was fired. Another point that reinforces this is that there is a cryo freeze center, where in the past, before the fold weapon is tested, the freeze spell looks unharmed and something alive inside, but in the present they're half opened. But what are inside these pods anyway? Sure, they have a biological testing facility next door, so that these pods contain prowlers that are just waiting to be experimented on is to be expected. But the truth is even worse than that. Mardas Log 21B, Human Specimen 3.4. The experiments on the IMS Odyssey's colonists are underway. Soon we will discover the long-lasting effects the Ark has on organic matter and brain function. For those who have paid attention to the lore in Tidal 1, you should know who these colonists are. They're captured colonists from the actual map, Colony. After the fold weapons launched, the life support stopped working and the colonists sadly died. Something that is strange as well in this area is the extreme aging acceleration that BT points out when scanning the bodies outside of the lobby when they arrive at the complex. Could this have something to do with the test of the fold weapon? Could this be the long lasting effect on organic matter after the arc and the fold weapon? Maybe this is a fallout of the fold weapon's use. Maybe the aliens that created the fold weapon and the arc died of old age thanks to the use of the fold weapon. But, I want to hear what you think down in the comments. Surely, some of you are probably going to be physicists, and what is the possibility that I am correct on this? I'm really more of a biologist, but I have dabbled in astronomy and the occasional physics. I'd like to really know what you think about this, because I'm not completely lost on the subject, but who knows, you know, my knowledge could be outdated. Uh, maybe you know! If you do, let me know! So, thank you for watching our collaboration, guys. Huge shout out to the Flying Teacup, whose mic is apparently Apparently infinitely better than mine. I hope you guys enjoyed our explanation of the history and function of a fold weapon. I would appreciate it if you guys would go give his channel a look and see if there's anything you like because the guy does awesome work. Anyhow, if you did like the video, hit that like button and if you liked it enough, why not consider subbing to the channel? I've got many more speculative videos as well as videos based on lore, which is actual fact, coming out all the time. I would like to thank my patrons of course. We've got Layla Elizarin, then your boy Master BC, and then we got Fritz. Next up on the resident tier, we have G. Anderson, John Russo, and Richard Muhlenberg. With their PhD in genetics, we have Divine Whisper. With their masters in biology, we've got Adam Hartswick, Andrew Lawson, Brian H. Briggs, Cameron Smith, and Ryan Garnum. With their bachelors in morphological sciences, we've got A Big Fat Snake, Dustin Ellis, Eric Scott Gillies, Joseph Radical, Natsuki Chiaki, Ahigo Comics, and I'm just gonna be real with you guys, if his name's not Joseph Radical and he tells me it's not, I'm just gonna keep calling him Joseph Radical because that's pretty radical. Anyways, I would like to thank you guys for your patronage. Uh, as always, it's really appreciated. If you would like to become a patron, I will drop my link down in the description. Also, I have a Discord, make sure to check that out as we have almost 500 people now. And I also stream on Twitch occasionally, like, I don't know, twice a week or something, so I'll drop a link for that as well. Alright guys, so that does it for me. As always, I will see y'all in the next one.